Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing very well. So I just watched Invincible. Let's talk about it. So Invincible is an Amazon Prime animated series that was created by Robert Kirkman and it is based off of the Invincible comics that were also created by Robert Kirkman as well as Ryan Otley and Corey Walker. Now these comics and indeed this series centres around the character of Mark Grayson who is voiced here by recently Academy Award nominated Stephen Yun, okay? And he is a 17 year old kid who happens to be the son of the most powerful being in the entirety of the planet because his father isn't actually from this planet his father is actually from a planet called Viltrum which is this world's version of Krypton I believe we'll talk about the comparisons and the parallels between uh, this world and the world of this comic versus some of the other worlds that we're more familiar with later on in this review but that is the kind of setup of the series and at the beginning of the series we get to see Mark develop his own powers as a result of his relation to his father Omni-Man and he's able to to kind of explore how to use his powers and also what it means to be a superhero in this world and to have those responsibilities whilst at the same time navigating his relationship with his father and indeed his mother during this very difficult very shocking moment in his life so that's kind of the premise of the first three episodes that dropped on amazon prime today and that's what we're going to be discussing in this review but before we even dive into my thoughts on this series so far as per usual if you haven't already please be sure to subscribe to my channel and make sure you turn on your notifications so that you can be told when I upload next. Without further ado, let's dive into this. So first off, before we even dive into the plot and the characters of this series, we need to talk about this incredible cast. We need to talk about this insane cast of actors who voice these characters in the series because my words, <laughs> what a lineup. First of all, as I already mentioned, we have recently Academy Award nominated Steven Yeun um, who voices the titular a character of the show but then we also have jk simmons who voices omni man himself nolan who is uh, mark's father we have sandra O oh lending her voice for the character of debbie grayson who is mark's mother we also have other actors like jillian jacobs walton goggins zachary quinto mark hamill seth rogan zazie beats we also have mahershala ali john ham ezra miller digimon honsu like this cast of actors is just insane <laughs> it's crazy i've never seen an animated series be so stacked when it comes to its uh voice cast so i'm very impressed on that front i wonder what the budget was like for this series and i wonder how much of that budget went towards these actors although to be fair they're doing a great job especially in the case of uh steven yun who of course voices mark himself and also sandra O oh and jk simmons i think their vocal performances here are excellent they blend into their characters so so well it's just a seamless simple biotic relationship between the animation of the characters and their voices like that is just excellent casting so even though it's very much like stunt casting in terms of getting these named actors portraying these roles it still very much works for the series it doesn't feel out of place in any way and especially because you know the gimmick of the series is that we have a ton of these superhero characters anyway some of which only appear for like one or two scenes it makes sense that we would have these named actors kind of popping in to give their um, vocal performances for these characters in order to kind of allow them to shine for that moment so it all works very very well I'm just super impressed to see that it's a thing like <laughs> it's very much a key feature for the show that draws your attention towards it in the first place which I'm sure was the intention behind this decision to begin with and now to talk about the characters that these actors actually voice and I have to say I'm a huge fan of the characters of this series already like we've only gotten three episodes with them but my my <laughs> I am in this story and it is mostly because of these compelling characters in particular of course Mark who is at the center of this story he is developing his superpowers at the time that we um, kind of are introduced to him in these three episodes and he's trying to navigate his way around that he's been waiting for these powers pretty much all his life seeing how his father who is Omni Man who's basically the Superman of this world is able to save people you know save lives build this legacy he very much wants to be a part of that and do something Thing like that for himself and so when his powers kick in he's really excited he's been waiting on this but interestingly enough 
Okay, interestingly enough, initially it seems as though his father has also been excited for this day to come. It seems as though on his planet of Viltrum, which seems to be the equivalent of Krypton in this series, it is expected that someone of Mark's age would start to develop their powers and so he's waiting for it, you know, any day now, as he says um, earlier on in the first episode. But it seems as though when his son actually gets the powers that um, he starts to kind of disconnect a little bit am i crazy <laughs> that is such an interesting dynamic it's such an interesting relationship that is explored between the father and son characters in this show because it seems as though whilst on the one hand at times uh nolan wants to kind of push his son forward and encourage his son and he very much wants to propel him forward in order to meet the legacy that he's already set up as omni man at other times it seems as though he's also trying to like sabotage him or like put him down like earlier on in the first episode when his son hasn't gotten those powers yet he says that you know they'll be coming in any day now like we're just waiting but then later on when he gets them he's like oh maybe our lives would have been better if he just never gotten them at all and it's like what is this dichotomy like what is going on are they even the same person because he sure doesn't act like it sometimes it seems as though sometimes he does want to put his son down or really kind of stress the idea that his son isn't ready um for the responsibilities of being a superhero now that might be true but it's just the vibe that I get from the character although I might be justified in that feeling because of course we also get that bombastic ending to the first episode which we'll talk about later on but yeah it's a very interesting father-son dynamic that we get um explored in this series at least in the first three episodes and similarly to this I do think that the relationship between Mark and his mother is also quite interesting they have this kind of discussion later on and I believe the first or second episode where Mark is trying to practice his landing <laughs> which he's trash at okay he's very bad at landing he's making holes you know craters everywhere but he's trying to practice his landing and his mum kind of meets him outside in their garden and they talk about the difference that's occurred now that Mark has his powers and now the mum is the only kind of regular person in the family she's just an ordinary human being as opposed to being someone from Mark's father's planet who has these superpowers and these capabilities to you know achieve all of these incredible things and save people's lives lives um, and so she's kind of coming to terms with how that's going to change her relationship with her son because now it's clear that her son is following more in the path that the father has cleared for him as opposed to kind of siding with um, the mum and kind of having that close bond as the two people who are you know ordinary human beings in their family. I also really enjoyed the relationship between Debbie and Nolan in this series the two parents because first of all they're very overtly affectionate towards each other like you can see the love that's present between between the two characters which is great it doesn't feel like you know Nolan feels resentful towards Debbie for you know being married to this ordinary human when he's capable of you know godlike things um it feels as though he enjoys his life and his marriage to her which is nice to see <laughs> it's nice to see him you know be happily married at least on the surface I don't know what's going on below the surface with that character okay um but in terms of their relationship I think it's sweet they have this kind of great dynamic between each other where Debbie understands the world that he's coming from at this point it's just kind of normal to her and she's just she knows how to roll with the punches basically which I enjoy she's not the kind of nagging wife stereotype which is a nice change so I do like their family dynamic overall even though I do think there again is a little bit more underneath the surface that might be explored in the other episodes especially as it pertains to the relationship between the father and the son next when it comes to the character of Mark we do get to explore his life outside of the superhero realm with his you know high school drama like the typical kind of teenage storyline that we get where he's kind of being bullied in high school and um, by a flash thompson style bully okay again with the parallels between other superhero comics um, and he also has a gay best friend who very much plays that gay best friend archetype so far at least we haven't really seen much of him that kind of strays from that archetype which is slightly disappointing hopefully we'll get to see more of the character be fleshed out um in the later episodes um but yeah 
yeah like that's just it's cute it's nothing that we haven't seen before time and time again it's very peter parker in that way again with the comparisons to other um you know comic book universes um but yeah i enjoy the character of mark overall so the scenes aren't annoying i like his pursuit of amber okay i think it's really cute that he has a black female love interest scarcely seen <laughs> scarcely seen okay so i was happy to see it quite frankly even though they don't seem to be end game in this series like it seems as though he's leaning more towards the eve route okay he's taking a stop over at amber but i don't think she's going to be the end game for him in terms of love interest but we'll see where this goes but yeah all of this is cute there's nothing really offensive here but at the same time there's nothing wholly innovative either because like i said it's very reminiscent of other superheroes that we've got in the past in particular peter parker but what's really interesting for me at least is seeing the incorporation of these superhero characters in the world of invincible <laughs> because it's really interesting to see how superhero characters are basically used as kind of backup for the police like I'm sorry, I say this in like all superhero medias, okay, that are exploring, you know, superheroes and their impact on society. Um, where's the army? <laughs> where's, where's the National Guard? Where's the army? Where's the Air Force? Like, where, where are the other institutions? Like, why are they so useless in all of these superhero medias? Because you shouldn't have to resort to calling Superman every day to handle like bank robbers. That's just embarrassing that's just embarrassing and also what really like strikes me as quite confusing and quite baffling is that some of these um villains villains of the week um they're not like particularly smart okay they're not particularly impressive and yet they still like they still <laughs> try they still try basically is what i'm saying like how are you still trying when you know that omni man is out there i don't understand like maybe it's just determination maybe i should applaud their determination and their perseverance but it seems crazy to me that as a villain of the week you would actually go out there on those streets and try to wreak havoc on them and on the people knowing full well that at any moment omni man could make an appearance or not even just omni man but the guardians of the globe wink wink the guardians of the globe could pop up at any time like any of those guardians are super threatening on their own so imagine the whole team plus only man like why would you even bother how has crime not been eradicated <laughs> is my point but yes as i've been saying this series does have some cute little references to other comic books and other comic book universes and characters for example we have the character of mark grayson himself who seems to be a reference to i believe dick grayson from the dc comics and the you know batman verse um who becomes nightwing or robin or something or maybe both i <laughs> i'm not as familiar with dc law okay but i'm pretty sure he becomes nightwing and he also looks quite similar to dick grayson from the dc comics i believe unless i'm making up <laughs> unless i'm making up what dick grayson looks like in my mind um but there are small references here and there of course we have omni man who is um hugely um inspired by superman he's like all powerful in that way he has a lot of superman's powers um, and the planet that he comes from is largely a reference probably to krypton we have the guardians of the globe which sounds a lot like the guardians of the galaxy although the team itself is largely comprised of superheroes that echo more of you know the justice league as opposed to the actual guardians of the galaxy um but there are just like all of these parallels throughout the series which is really cute as i said we have references to you know peter parker and flash thompson it's kind of like this amalgamation of a ton of different comic books and comic book stories and characters which i really enjoy now having said that this series overall does very much remind us of perhaps another amazon prime project that has become quite successful okay quite popular within the superhero genre and that is of course the boys in a lot of ways invincible very much echoes what the boys explores in terms of a world with superheroes and how that would affect society you know what role would these superheroes play in society except it takes a little bit less of a cynical turn and a cynical perspective on that matter at least 
least at this point in time when we've reached episode three, even though of course there is a healthy dose of cynicism there, especially through the character of Omni-Man who has echoes of Homelander, <laughs> of course. But overall, it doesn't seem as though superheroes are kind of intrinsically evil in this world in the way that, you know, a lot of superheroes are in the boys' verse. <laughs> so in Invincible, superheroes aren't really a part of an institution that needs to be taken down um, because they're kind of commodified and being used as products in a way that the uh, superheroes are in the boys. They're sometimes kind of private actors, sometimes they work under the institution and um, that we see that's kind of like S.H.I.E.L.D. in this case in the series. I can't remember the name of the institution itself, I'll put the name up here if I can find it. But there is a mixture of the different actors who have superpowers and who are trying to do good um, present in this series. So like I said, there is less of that inherent evil in all superheroes as is one of the major themes um, in the boys but still there are echoes of similar themes that are explored in this series except this time around in animation and as a result of it being animation and being r-rated we do also get to have that healthy dose of violence yes <laughs> the healthy dose of violence okay let's talk about the end of that first episode because my my <laughs> my 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 for the majority of the show it is just this beautiful bright you know saturday morning cartoon show the animation itself is very reminiscent of what we would see in like the early 2000s maybe even the 90s with the x-men series i think but it's very reminiscent of the kind of cartoons you would see at that point with this huge emphasis on you know primary and secondary colors it's beautiful it's such a, a pleasure to watch i was so happy to watch this series and just see how beautiful and bright and clean and very well animated it was but then you get to the parts where stuff is hmm, stuff is going down okay especially when Omni-Man is involved <laughs> the violence is happening okay the show is earning it's R rating especially when Omni-Man is involved he takes no prisoners wow <laughs> because it is revealed at the end of the episode that Omni-Man is the one who kills the entirety of the Guardians of the Globe I did inexplicably okay we don't have an explanation up until this point for the next two episodes it's just you know an investigation that's taking place in the background of everything but my my that scene was brutal as hell i was so impressed to see that this animation was able to depict these acts of violence of brutality of bloodiness and cruelty and insanity like it, it mm. <laughs> And so with this information, you know, the fact that he killed those superheroes, the kind of Justice League of this world, I'm starting to think that maybe the tension that exists between um, Mark and Nolan um, kind of stems from perhaps Nolan's jealousy? I don't, I don't know, like maybe Nolan liked the idea of his son taking after him, you know, taking um, after his power set and, you know, inheriting that from him and being a little mini-me to him. But when it actually came about, out. like when it actually became a reality after um, Mark turned 17 and he starts getting his powers it seems as though he's kind of withdrawing some of that enthusiasm <laughs> he's like hold up does this mean I'm no longer gonna be unique hmm don't know how I feel about that like I feel like that might be what's going on especially because he doesn't want to be under the control of any you know governmental um, institutions and um, so he just wants to be a free agent just doing his thing and saving the world whenever he wants to but it's interesting to to see that there is a bit of tension that exists between him and his son and perhaps it's because he feels threatened by his son um, and his position as the you know the big you know superhero the one that everyone loves the superman of this world is kind of being threatened by his son's uh, emergence in the superhero world itself so yeah overall the first three episodes of invincible were very compelling they were a joy to watch i'm invested in all of these characters even though there are many <laughs> and not all of them are fully fleshed out obviously some of them are just cameos for a great voice cast but I do think that overall the story seems to be really compelling I really like the character of Mark who's at the center of this story and his relationship with his parents is also quite compelling and a very interesting kind of take that we don't usually get because most times when it comes to stories like this the parents are dead okay the parents are often dead or they're a wall or whatever we never really get the kind of child parent relationships that are explored within this subgenre so I like the fact that we're getting some of that being explored in this series especially considering Mark's father is <laughs> he's a mess 
So I'm very much looking forward to the upcoming episodes of the series. I believe there are five left in the show, but until I do see the rest of the episodes, I won't be able to give it a rating as I usually do. So perhaps I'll be able to review the series on a weekly basis, along with my Falcon and the Winter Soldier reviews. I think that would make sense. But until then, I'm very excited. You know, I'm very much into this series and I'm looking forward to seeing what it comes up with in the next five episodes for this story. But that's it from me. Now that I told you guys my thoughts on Invincible episodes one to three, it's time for you guys to let me know what you thought of this show so far down in the comments below. Please be sure to subscribe to catch new videos coming up. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it and I will see you in the next one. Bye!